Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and I'm here checking out Cotton Reboot. Also known as Fantastic Night Dreams Cotton Reboot, which is a remake of one of the original cute em ups which is basically a shoot -em up but with cute things. Really cute things, and just ridiculous over-the-top representations of certain concepts. Like for example, the boss of this level will be death, and he will be completely and utterly over the top. So, this is only available in Japan right now, as of this video's recording. It is coming west, so if you want to be able to read the story in anything other than Japanese, two different kinds of Chinese, and I believe Korean's also in there as well, you might as well wait for that to come out. With that said though, there is barely a story. Allow me to summarize the story for you. Cute girl has lots of power. Fairy comes along, her world is in danger, she needs the little girl's help. Little girl walks away because she's not interested. Fairy promises little girl candy. Little girl is suddenly interested. Terrible lesson to be teaching your kids, I gotta say. But outside of that, that's basically the entire plot. You basically just go for it. Shoot all the monsters to get your candy. And I will point out that this is a remake. I do have footage of the original being played in the top right there. That is from the X68000 version that is included with Cotton Reboot as an extra. And I will point out that I did look up some footage of it on the X68000 on YouTube and that is basically the same. It looks almost identical so I, I can't imagine there'd be anything different at least in the X68000 version. The game was originally an arcade game but they decided to include this version instead. But yes, this is a full-on remake. They have included a bunch of new mechanics. They have included a bunch of new monster layouts. There's a ton more of them and they all look significantly different and fire significantly more. And as a result, the remake is great to play. It is legitimately a joy, but let's dip into why. But that means you'll have to get a little bit of a primer on how all the mechanics work first. So. You move with the analog stick and fire with the Y button, but firing with the Y button fires your straight forward shot and it also fires your bombs, which are things that fly out from underneath you, which are meant for hitting ground targets. The more gems that you collect from destroyed enemies will upgrade your EXP meter. And the more that your EXP meter fills up, the more powerful your weapon will get. Simple enough, right? But the gems also change color when they get shot. And when they change colour, they tend to become more powerful magic. So you collect them, and you'll get your disposable magic to use. However, on top of that, the more that you shoot them, the more powerful that they'll get. But on top of that, the gems will eventually get a bit too charged up, and will go black. And they won't let any more bullets through them. So you need to go through them to collect them once they've turned black in order to get points. But... If you shoot them too much, they will eventually break and you'll lose any sort of combo you had going on from getting black crystals. However, shooting crystals on top of making them more powerful magic attacks, which you use with the B button, you can also shoot through them. So when you shoot through them, it will create more streams of bullets which are more powerful than your base shot, even at maximum level. So you want to be shooting through your crystals as much as humanly possible in order to maintain your firepower. Which makes things very interesting because not only do you have to balance all the enemies on screen and where they are, you also have to balance your crystals. You have to balance which ones you want to be shooting through, which ones you need to leave alone so that you don't accidentally destroy them and lose your combo. And you need to also decide which ones to pick up in order to get your powerful magic attacks because there are a few of these powerful magic attacks. And they are more or less your get out of jail free card because they also serve as bullet destroyers. So if you're about to get hit, just hit the magic and it will go and help you out. There are a fair few different kinds of magic. You press the B button, you get anything from a dragon head that flies across the screen to an electrical beam which is a bit wider and lasts a bit longer but doesn't do as much damage but is great for taking out enemy bullets. To the ability to bring rocks tumbling down from the sky and hit everything on the screen to a gigantic lightning storm which swallows everything on screen. 
And I'm not entirely sure if I've got this mechanic right or not, but you can also hold the B button in order to charge up your magic and make it a more defensive shield for you so that you can fly through some really tough areas without having to worry about taking much in the way of damage, especially since you can only face one direction in this game. And they do have you scrolling pretty much every which way at some point throughout this. There is also another mechanic on top of all this. It is the gem, uh, I assume it's called Fever. It, that, I assume that's what it's like, where if you shoot enemies through gems, you'll get a ridiculous amount of bonus points and the multipliers will fill up the screen. And the more that you manage to charge that up, the more points that you will get. But of course, if you die, you lose bits out of it. So as a result, you're flying around, firing off all these shots, you're deploying magic at every discernible moment, but you're very carefully managing what gems you want to turn into black gems, so that you can pick them up and keep that combo going, while also charging up magic in the other gems, in order to make sure that you've got plenty of powerful magic spells available to you. And this balance of different shooting mechanics is great. And I enjoyed my time with this game thoroughly. As a result, once I had all the mechanics figured out, there is a tutorial that teaches you all of these things, but Google Translate wasn't exactly doing its best work, so I wasn't exactly able to get a grasp on things until I really played it. But frankly, that's how you need to figure out how to play shooter games in the first place. You just play them and figure out the uh, rest by yourself. It's more fun that way. With that said though, I really did enjoy the hell out of it. The gameplay is frantic, there's enemies everywhere. Needing to manage everything about the gems to leave you with a good source of magic, a good source of points, and a good source of firepower is what makes this remake interesting. And it's also why when I dipped into the original X68000 version of the game, I found myself getting bored by stage 2, which is why I decided to use the footage I had from that particular stage, because Really, there's not that much to it. You can shoot the gems to uh, change the magic that they'll give you. That whole magic system is in the original game. But there's no gem fever, there's no uh, black ones to be worth collecting, and there's a lot less in the way of enemies. The game is just nowhere near as frantic, and therefore it's nowhere near as interesting. Which, in my opinion, is what makes this a really damn good remake. Take what worked about the original, build on it with original systems, and then make it look and sound glorious. Because... All of these effects on screen creates a Technicolor nightmare, which is still relatively easy to navigate, because you can still see all of the dangerous things that are coming at you, for the most part, anyway. And the whole massive amount of glowy things on screen that's got a going on thing here reminded me very fondly of games like Crim Crimson Clover. With that said, though, it's nowhere near as difficult as Crimson Clover or things like that. I only had to continue like six or seven times in order to finish this, and for a retro shooter, that's pretty low, so I reckon I'm doing alright for myself, all things considered. And thankfully there's infinite continues, so yeah, no, no, no problems there, I was able to finish the game in about, excuse me, I was able to finish the game in about 35 minutes, which is pretty good. I mean, it's, it's not great. Obviously, you hope for a fair bit more when it comes to content, but it's an old-school scrolling shooter. There's not really that much to say about it. With that said, though, it did cost about 40 bucks US, which is not particularly great, but... Yeah, uh, what do you expect, I suppose? With that said, though, I don't regret it. I had a good time playing all the way through Cotton, and it really does help with the... The, just the really good looking graphics. They, they are very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very faithful to the original as well is something that I've noticed. They look really good while at the same time being almost identical. Even the cutscenes are almost identical. They've just been redone in a more high definition style and they really do look, re they do look really good. And the sound is great as well. Some of these sound tracks slap. They actually have a fair few different composers going on here, so it results in the soundtrack never getting particularly boring. And there are a lot of really obvious sound and visual cues when things like your gem fever are ready, you've got new magic, you level up, so everything that you need to know that's important is told to you more or less when you need it, and you're not going to be too worried about getting blindsided by the absolute cacophony of what's going on on screen.
and the other content they include in the game. So they do include, as I said before, the X68000 mode, which has five difficulties. The remake has three difficulties. And there's also a two and five minute gauntlet where you have to get as high a score as possible. Those are it for the main modes. They do also include the manual. They also have a fair few options, including being able to swap to the fairy instead of the girl as your character once you finish the game once. They do also let you customize things like your lives, your, as I already said, your difficulty and all that, but it does mean that you're not allowed to go on the leaderboards. But I stayed leaderboard consistent, and I'm actually quite proud of the fact that I ended up coming, uh, I believe it was sixth. So I'm in the top 10. This game only did come out yesterday, so that's not going to last long, especially considering that I needed like eight continues, but I'm still quite proud of that. I still did pretty well for myself, even if it's not going to last very long. So yeah, I wholeheartedly enjoyed Cotton Reboot. It's a really fun shooter. The new mechanics they've added in the remake are all really well done and make the game a frantic but loads of fun shooter. It looks and sounds great. It runs really well. And it was a great amount of fun for the 35 minutes that it lasted. The extra modes are all pretty good. Being able to play the original is fine, although I wasn't particularly interested in the original. And I, I don't really know what else to say. The 40 bucks might be a bit too much for someone who isn't into scrolling shooters. If you're into scrolling shooters though, you probably already know this is out and have already bought it, but if you're even remotely interested and the price of the game is reasonable, whether it be out in the States or in Europe, and you look at it and you think, I'd pay for that, then go for it. It is legitimately a lot of fun. I'm going to shut up and let you watch. One more stage? Yeah, one more stage. This has been Blue Maxima. I'll see you all next time.